Hi, my name is Morgan and I am a neuroscience researcher and today we're going to be talking about video games. Well, one video game specifically, Tetris. So if you're new to my channel, which a lot of you guys are, on the first Monday of every month I post a Mental Health Monday video, which is what today's video is. In these videos I discuss different topics uh, centered around mental health from a neuroscientist perspective. But today we're talking about Tetris, which you might not think has anything to do with your mental health, but it actually does. Before I get started with this video, I just want to say that the links to all of my sources for this video are in the description, just like they always are. Please feel free to check those out and do research for yourself. I first heard about this phenomena of using Tetris as a mental health tool on a podcast. There was, I believe it was a neuroscientist or a psychologist brought up using Tetris to improve your mental health and I was like that's fake like that's that can't be real and so I looked it up and it really is something that psychologists and neuroscientists are promoting as a way to improve your mental health. So if you're unfamiliar with the game Tetris I'll put up a picture here of like what it looks like but it's whenever you take blocks that are different shapes and try to like match them together to like make a solid row, row of things. I feel like most people know what Tetris is if you don't just google it. <laughs> But I'll just list some of the things that people are using Tetris to help treat. Um, it promotes cognitive enhancement, it uh, promotes memory and brain growth, it treats lazy eye, um, it can dampen vividness and emotionality of memories, which I'll talk about more in a second, uh, it can prevent intrusive memories of psychological trauma, and it can reduce anxiety and also reduce cravings. The way that scientists think Tetris is working to do all of these things is by sort of preventing your brain from being able to think about the other things. So when it comes to memories, Tetris is what's called a visuospatial task, which is something that involves both your visual cortex and also like spatial memory. So whenever you're playing Tetris, you have all of these brightly colored blocks that you are seeing and perceiving. Uh, there's usually music that goes along with it and you're trying to figure out how to orient the blocks correctly to fit them together, which is the spatial aspect of it. So in research, scientists have given uh, research subjects who have traumatic memories or intrusive memories, just ask them to play Tetris whenever those memories pop up. And it does reduce the vividness and the like emotions that go along with those memories. And the thought is the way that memory works, every time we bring up a new memory, we sort of rewrite it. That's why like witness statements aren't really good to use in court because we remember things differently every time we bring them up again. So by bringing up this traumatic memory and then playing Tetris, which distracts you from it and takes your mind away from the memory, it then sort of reduces the amount of your brain capacity that is going towards the memory. And then every time you think of it again, it's going to be less and less. And everything that I'm saying in this video is very preliminary research. We don't know exactly how this is working. This is just the current thought behind it. Psychologists think part of the reason why it's able to distract us so well is because of that visual spatial aspect, but also because it's a game with a clear goal and you get immediate feedback as to whether or not you accomplish that goal. So it's not very high risk. It's not high stakes. You're not going to get like a lot of anxiety while you're playing Tetris. And it also has a clear goal at the end that you're either going to accomplish or not going to accomplish. The entire time you're playing the game, your only goal is to match up the tiles and you don't need to be thinking about or focused on anything else. But it's also important to note that it is just challenging enough to still keep your brain focused on that. If you were just like mindlessly playing a game, then your mind could still wander to those traumatic memories. But because it's just difficult enough that you do have to focus on it, it can distract from those memories and instead you're focusing on a fun brightly colored game. And Tetris isn't the only game that does this. There have been studies with other games but Tetris was sort of the first one that was identified in so that's why it's the main one that we talk about. But some other games that do this include Rubik's Cubes, Guitar Hero, and even Candy Crush. Just games that are brightly colored and have a clear goal and are clear on whether or not you accomplish that goal. Scientists have also used Tetris to reduce cravings for foods, drugs, cigarettes, and even alcohol. So the specific study that I'm talking about was only a week long, so we're not totally sure whether or not this would last indefinitely, but based on the way that the study turned out, it's 
safe to sort of assume that it would. So in the study, a scientist asked participants to just any time that they were feeling or craving to play Tetris for three minutes, not like an extended period of time. It would take like an hour out of their day. Just you start craving, you're on a diet, you start craving food, play Tetris for three minutes. You're addicted to cigarettes, you play Tetris for three minutes and see, report back if you're still feeling that craving afterwards. And they found that it, playing Tetris for three minutes reduced cravings by a fifth. And this also sort of depends on what the substance was. The reduction in craving for food was a lot more significant than say the reduction in craving for uh, cigarettes. But it still did reduce craving amongst all of these things. The thought behind this is that a part of craving is sort of visualizing yourself doing the thing and imagining what it would be like to do the thing. So again, with Tetris being something that is just a little bit challenging and takes up both the, the visual aspect of your brain and the spatial aspect, it distracts your brain from the craving essentially. Playing Tetris has also been shown to reduce anxiety. This is one that I can testify to myself. I, after reading these studies, did start playing Tetris anytime I started to have a panic attack or started to freak out. It does really help reduce anxiety. It's not going to make any of these things go away 100%. It's not like this game is like a magical cure for anything, but the fact that it can help you on that journey is awesome. And it's one of the only ways we've found to reduce these symptoms without introducing like drugs or medicine of some sort to help people. This is just a game that you can install on your phone and play for three minutes. So those are some of the great benefits of playing Tetris. What's like a potential downside of playing Tetris? So there's this thing called the Tetris effect, which is essentially if you play Tetris enough, you're going to start sort of seeing these blocks in everyday life. Like if you look at something that's vaguely block shaped, your mind's going to sort of superimpose Tetris onto it, which is kind of crazy. And then it also might start appearing in your dreams. So like whenever I started playing it for my anxiety, I did start having dreams where I was just playing Tetris, um, which is a really well documented effect, but we're not totally sure why it happens. There have even been some studies in patients with enterograde amnesia, which if you haven't seen it, I have a video on amnesia. I'll link it in a card somewhere and in the description, but enterograde amnesia just means that you can't form new memories. So you'll remember everything before whatever incident caused this, but you won't be able to form new memories afterwards. So the study took patients with enterograde amnesia and had them play Tetris for seven hours over the course of three days and the patient started having dreams about Tetris and would be able to tell the researchers about their dreams about Tetris but they never remembered playing the game. They didn't remember that they the doctor who had introduced them to the game of Tetris or actively playing it. They just remembered having these dreams about blocks floating around. So that's sort of all that I have to say about Tetris really. There's not a lot of um, papers on it or a lot of information out there because this research is kind of more recent. But I think it's something that's really awesome to look at. If we can decrease anxiety by playing a game for three minutes on our phone, that's super awesome. Uh, one thing that I didn't talk about is that there's been some studies that show that playing Tetris supports uh, brain growth in uh, adolescents. But yeah, so basically everyone go download Tetris on your phone or on your computer and just play it for a few minutes a day and I mean, at the very least, you've played a fun game and maybe it helps your mental health of some sort. If you are suffering from some sort of addiction or you have cravings for different things, even if you're just like trying to go on a diet and you're having cravings for like a donut, play Tetris for three minutes, see if it helps you. Worst case scenario, you're playing a fun game. Best case, it helps. So I just want to end this video by saying thank you so, so much to everyone who's been subscribing to me and everyone who's come to this channel and given me a lot of support. I truly, truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you have any questions about different mental health concepts, please feel free to comment them below or send me an email at askaneuroresearcher at gmail.com. And I am trying my best to answer any questions that people send my way. I'm super excited that people have started asking me questions and I would love to answer as many as possible. You can also ask me any neuroscience questions questions that you might have in general and I'll answer that during one of my normal Wednesday videos. Also be sure to check out my social media. I'll put them all here and also link them in the descriptions. If you go and follow me on social media you might be able to be involved in making some of my videos. So I recently put up some questions on my Instagram asking uh, for a video that I'm planning to do next week and also put up a poll for what video I'm doing on Wednesday and so what I 
put am going to put up on Wednesday is something that you guys decided on. So I'm very excited for that. Be sure to check it out. And with all that being said, I will see you on Wednesday. Bye. Bye.